All righty, folks. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you may be. I uh, just want to do. There we go. We are good to go. Uh, just doing a quick mic check. Uh, welcome everybody to today's session. My name is Boyan Petreski. Go by Bo. Today is April 6, twenty twenty-two. We will be doing the nailing FX and crypto session today. Uh, before we get started, please make sure to read that disclaimer that this is for educational and instructional purposes only. Of course, there's always risk when it comes to trading. I think that's why we're all here for that. Um, looking to follow this this following agenda here, the uh, looking at the current market environment, review any uh, closed trades that we have or open positions, and then look for uh, new opportunities to go for this session. Let's go ahead and get this uh, PowerPoint closed up. So this is what our workspace typically looks like. We are uh, utilizing a uh, trading view right now. However, our software is available for TradeStation and MetaTrader 5 as well. And also our very own platform top, that's the Tradictive Options Planner, which is our very own platform that we have developed for trading. Uh, instruments utilizing some professional platform features built into a retail platform. So, as I said, the agenda is to take a look at some uh, uh, previous trades as well. So, let me take a look at this real quick. We do have a couple of trades that we did have last time. That was on March 23rd when we met. Um, we were looking to uh, go short on the New Zealand uh, US dollar. Uh, this is what the setup looked like. If this is unfamiliar to you, then maybe you know you weren't with us on the last session. However, this is the screenshot of the exact moment in time that we looked at this and said, okay, this looks like a favorable um, opportunity. Let's go ahead and take our uh, trade here. And we did. Uh, this one ended up being a time stop, which is a rule that we have in our platform. As you see, it was a time stop rule, small loss. This did end up working in our favor, nearly came to our T1, but did not quite make it. Actually, right here, nearly, like, it, it touched the line, didn't quite make it, ended up uh, turning around, and then uh, we had to close it for a time stop. Uh, the time stop, what it means is the following. This was our candle of entry. We count one, two, three candles. And if within those three candles, whatever the increment is in this scenario, the eight minutes, we're going to close our trade for whatever it is, small loss, small win, whatever it is. That's the scenario that we had on the New Zealand dollar USD. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the other ones that we had Um we had, yeah, we had a similar set, uh, situation happening with the dollar franc. Uh, we were looking to go long uh, on the dollar franc. This was the setup that we had. This was the candle of, of entry right there. We were looking to go long, and I'll, I'll explain the exact approach that we took, you know, why we took it and everything as we go along. I'm just sharing with you the results of what was going on, uh, you know, because I, I feel like that, that transparency is should be a requirement for anybody showing uh, any sort of trading, in my opinion. All right, uh, that's our, this is our candle of entry. This trade did not work in our favor at all at any point. Um, ended up closing below here, ended up going lower, kind of gave us a little bit of hope there. Nothing happened. Third candle closed as well on the fourth one. We closed it due to time stop for a small loss as well. Again, small losers, I'll take them. Small losers and small winners, that's just part of doing business, right? Just consider those as costs of doing business. Small losses, you know, you lose a little bit of money. Small wins, you made a little bit of money. Those are not the ones that are going to make or break your trading. But it is important to take them because it's part of your uh, trading plan. All right, the next one that we had was the New Zealand dollar USD. Uh, this one I don't believe got triggered at all on NZDUSD. We can look at it though, just to double check. I may have missed it, but there's a good chance that it didn't. Actually, let me just uh, 
open it up from here. All right, there is our vertical. Let's go back this way. I'm sorry, we already analyzed that one. What am I talking about? Yeah, NZD USD, we, we said that was a, a, the hourly time stop. Dollar franc, it was the euro USD is the one that I was looking at that I don't believe uh, triggered. This was our setup, the euro USD. I know we had a third one, and then we have one crypto one with Axie. We're going to analyze that one as well. Uh, this one is the one that I believe just left without us. As you see, it was already well down below here. And, of course, I set these trades to expire before it's overly extended to the point where I'm not going to be worried about being filled on a trader that I, on a trade that I had absolutely no business being filled on. Okay? So that's what this is. As you see, uh, this was the point in time. This was our sell stop up here. This was the point in time. This vertical purple line was the point in time that we saw this trade. So it's easy to track on the way back when you're back testing this, when you're trading, uh, when you're logging this in your trade journal, and so on. And this already had gone, you know, way past where it, you know, should be. So we were a little late on this one. It still made sense at that point. However, both of these legs will expire after that point where this trade no longer makes sense. And I'm going to talk about this too during the session today. So that's that one. That was a no fill. And now Axie, okay, Axie, we were looking to long. I don't believe this one filled either, but let me double check at 5032. So let's take a look at Axie. This is crypto. Uh, here we are. All right, so yeah, it didn't fill, but boy, did it run. Uh, sometimes that's how it is. Sometimes trading is, is that. As you see, this was our setup that we were looking to go long. And we were looking to go long, you know. It's you know, I can't I can't brag about this and say, look at this amazing trade I got for you, because it didn't get filled. Nothing to brag about. This thing, these things happen. Our entry, our buy limit was at 5032, uh, when Axie was at 5187. As you see here, it never came to 5032. This was the point that we were looking at it. It was as low as 5166. This low 5172, and then the rest is history. This ran up, you know, amazingly, massively, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and uh, that's that for trades from the previous day, from the, pre I'm sorry, previous uh, time um, I was here. Those are the trades. So we had a couple of small losses, a uh, couple of no fills. So that's, that's that for the previous day. Let's go ahead and um, kind of reset up here. Uh, would you guys want me to start with crypto or do you want me to start with uh, Forex? I'm okay with either one. I want to see what the crowd thinks. Feel free to type it in the chat if you'd prefer crypto or, or what crypto. Or if you want me to do Forex, you know, which, which pair you'd like me to take a look at first. And we'll be getting started. Okay, Forex from Omid. All right. Hope Forex, okay. Currently, the crowd is leaning towards Forex. Forex first, Euro USD. There we go. All right. All right. That's it. Participation, folks. That makes this a lot more fun, I think, for me and you. Let's take a look at the Euro USD. All right. Euro USD. Wait a minute. All right. We do have some crypto, too. Good. All right. All right. Good stuff. All right. Um, placeholder T2, no T2. Okay. All righty. Also crypto. Wonderful. Let's take a look at the Euro USD here. So uh, we're going to start with the big picture, the daily time frame, and the 50, oh, the daily time frame on the right, and the 55 minute on the left. Now, First, let me kind of organize the workspace here for you so you understand what's going on. Up top, we have the, the time frames that we're going to be utilizing. Uh, these hourly, four hour, and daily, right? Pretty common time frames. Those are all going to be used with this workspace here on the right. Okay? The uh, eight minute, 
21 minute and 55 minute time frames not so common right we call those edge time frames those are going to be used with this workspace down here all right so just to kind of give you an idea common time frames on the right uncommon time frames on the left now the next thing that you don't see here that you might not be seeing or you may have depending or, or, or not if you're a subscriber with us or not um, we have these flying saucer circle looking things right and uh, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here right this stuff here all right so that those are our auto UFOs that's our patented and proprietary technology that we utilize uh, to uh, get our entries and exits when trading uh, crypto, Forex, stocks, you name it, it's doing it. Um, we utilize that with something called the auto climate, which is down below here. This uh, instrument here, you can think of it essentially as a, a trend setter or a trend uh, analyzer on steroids. Okay, so that's why we call it a climate, not a trend. Because ultimately a trend is, you know, something that's really undefined out there. It's, it's, it's something that we're saying, you know, different, different schools of thought will have different approaches about that. Our approach is the following. The auto climate gives us what the market that we're currently looking at, which in this scenario is the Euro USD, is giving us to do. Should we be going long or should we be going short or should we be skipping it and going somewhere else? So it's very important to understand that you, just because you're in front of the computer, that doesn't mean that you should be putting on trades. If the market gives you opportunity, then you take it. Otherwise, you do not. So in this scenario, we see that uh, there's some numbers here. Current STD down with the down arrow, STD up, standard deviation up, uh, standard deviation down. In this scenario, because we have a thick red dot, we are looking for shorting opportunities based off of this daily climate. We're currently on the third day down out of typically five. We always, 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 always round up climate numbers. Okay, the reason why is because we want to give the climate as much time to work as possible. So even if this was 4.01, I would still round this up to five. All right. So now we know which direction we should be looking at. We should be looking for short opportunities. Now the next question that we should answer, uh, say, you know, it's very easy to say, okay, yeah, just look for short opportunities. Okay, where do we enter? Where are we, if we're proven wrong, where do we get out for a stop? Or where do we get out for a profit if we're right? So those, you know, the where is very important to answer. It's very easy to say, yeah, this looks like a short. Let's go ahead and short this. I mean, that's okay. You could do that. <laughs> you know, go ahead and back test this, see how it works out for you. But in this scenario, we are looking to short this market with particular set of parameters that we got to meet. All right. The first one that we're going to look at is something is very simple. As you see here, I have a nine moving average on my, uh, client, on my uh, chart here. As you see right there, it says 9 EMA, right? Gives me the actual value of it, 1.113, 354. That's the previous, uh, th I'm sorry, that's uh, that's not true. Uh, the, that's why I'm like, wait a minute. It's 1.09934, also shown here on this chart. As you see, I'm not tracking uh, the price here. I'm only tracking the time to close. Makes it a little bit easier to understand and, and not get confused. Uh, so the current EMA value, this blue line that's moving around here, is 1.09934. Okay, 09934. Current price is at 1.09278, which you can see, you know, right here. So what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to go into a trade that's going to have as much probability in our favor as we can, right? Sometimes things will line up 100% and it may not be, uh, it, it still may not work. Sometimes you'll get half the stuff working in your favor and that trade is going to make your day, your week, your month. All right, it, it happens. But in this scenario, we're looking for the following. We're looking for this moving average that we're seeing here to be enveloped. And by enveloped, it means it should be within 
a UFO. Okay, so we're looking for the number of this moving average to be enveloped by a UFO, and that's where we go in. In this scenario, we don't have a trade. The reason why is the moving average is at 1.09934. Well, 1.09934 is around here, right? Now, a little caveat to this. Do we think, right, this is a moving average? What does that moving average do? It moves. If price were to move up, what's going to happen with the moving average? Well, it's also going to switch around like this, right? So do we think that these two could meet in this UFO right now? Right, what do we think? Do we think that the moving average can go from 1.099 to 1.101 and current prices at 1.09? I think so. I think it can definitely do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this trade up right now. I'm going to remove this. I think this might have been either from a previous session or I'm not sure, but this expires, so I'm not quite sure. So let's go ahead and remove that. So this is already reviewed in the past. Now let's go ahead and look at, wait a minute, one, two. You know what? I think this was also a time stop. I'm looking at this right now. We're going to look at it on the four-hour to analyze it, but let's go ahead with the, with the daily right now. I think this was also a time stop. So I'm going to uh, put my uh, vertical here. So we're going to take a vertical line. This is where we're looking at this stuff, right? We're going to look at this as, as a vertical. Why is this not my default? I don't know. Hmm. Default. Okay, dashed line. Default dashed, okay. And I definitely want it thicker. So we know this is exactly where we were looking at this to, to get it for us. I'm not sure why it did that for me, but it's okay. So this is what we were looking at here. We're also going to uh, put the same thing here. This is where we, this is the time of day, time that we looked at this trade and analyzed it and said, hey, listen, we think we have a trade here. All right. Now, something that I've been, you know, having issues with with uh, TradingView ever since I started using it, I'm not quite sure why. I'm still waiting for uh, feedback from their uh, support team. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, set this up, and I'll tell you why I'll have a different entry point uh, in just a minute. So, first things first. All right, we know that we're going short. Where are we going short? You see this value right here, 1.0134. That's where this UFO, this this uh, set of unfilled orders starts at 1.0, uh, 1.10134. Now, uh, because obviously all these forex pairs have you know five digits, some of them four in the back. What we have, and I'm gonna share with you right now, it's a very simple little instructions set of instructions when it comes to rounding up these numbers so it's easier to track and easier to document whenever we're selling we're going to round down for entry so right this is 10134 so what are we going to do we're going to round it down to 10113 1.1013 let's call it all right the next thing is our stop we're going to round down again and do i'm uh, sorry we're going to do plus seven pips so we're going to add seven pips for the stop all right, now where does our stop go? We talked about our entry. Where does the stop go? The stop goes into the white space above the UFO when you're shorting, right? Uh, the instrument pair is right here, uh, Friday. It's uh, EURUSD. You'll see it right there. So we're looking to short the EURUSD. All right, our entry point for this short is going to be at 101. Three, <laughs> ten, thirteen. All right, uh, we're gonna have a stop loss and a take profit. But before I do that, I want to just make sure and, and I understand this properly, right? This is the third day down out of typically five. That means we have two more days 
for this to work in the maximum uh, probabilities, right? Could this work afterwards? Absolutely. Uh, is it going to be maximum probabilities in our favor? No. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to tell TradingView to essentially delete this order after two days. So basically, today is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So on Actually, since markets will close on Friday, I'm just going to terminate this on Friday, and I'm going to do it uh, by uh, 6.20. Yeah, so, so by Friday, I'll do it by 6.30. I'm going to set this to expire by then. So if this doesn't get filled by then, it's automatically going to cancel out. I don't have to worry about checking it. I don't have to worry about babysitting it, right? We want to utilize these tools that are given to us to the maximum extent possible. All right, now let's go ahead and set our risk to 150 bucks. That's just the default that I've always used. You can always adjust this as much as you want, as high as you want, as low as you want. I typically just go with 150 bucks per leg, meaning I'm going to be risking $300 for the overall trade. Given that a lot of Forex uh, providers out there, especially in Europe and, and across the uh, around the world, we have, you know, 500x leverage. This this shouldn't be hard to achieve, even with a small account. Uh, if you want to, you can always go down to 100 bucks. You know, whatever you want to do. I'm gonna keep mine at 150 because that's what I've always done. So now, uh, as far as placing the stop, though, as I said, it has to be in the white space, right? And the fact is, is right now we actually have a an overlapping UFO. Right, we have this one that starts at 1.0134, ends at 1.0388. However, at 1.0362, we actually have another UFO that ends at 105.40. So why not combine these two as one and put our stop above? Wow, that was a really bad horizontal line. <laughs> put our stop above there. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So now remember, our stop is going to be 1.1054, right? There's nothing to round up or down there because it's an even number. It's, it's a zero at the end. So that's already rounded up. And according to our uh, rules here, we go round up and add seven pips for a stop. Okay, so seven pips. So 54 plus seven is 61. So we're risking 48 pips, and for this first leg, we're going to go with 48 pips uh, profit, 48 pips stop. All right, there's our trade. All right, so that's that for this one. Now, that's the first leg. That's the trade that this is what this will do, right? Let's say it goes in, right? It, it kind of travels up, down, up, down, hits us, right? Let's say it pulls back retests a little bit higher in here there's a pull into it okay and then finally find some sellers and drops down to our t1 which is great right we got our t1 we locked in half the position what does that mean for us even if this happens what does that mean for us did we make money or did we lose money let me know when you answer that in the in the question so what would happen in this scenario we took our t1 and then it went to our stop. What happened? I want you guys to think about this, okay? All right. Um, one oh, so we're going to go to 1.101. And I'm just going to put this one, you know, 0.1 pips above. The reason why? is because TradingView cancels my T1 when I enter with the same exact location there. So the way I, my workaround around that is the following. <laughs> I just add a point 0.1 or, you know, you deduct point 0.1, whichever one you want to do. All right. Uh, hope and New Heights. Uh, you guys answered the question, but uh, nobody else did. I just want to give everybody else a little bit of time. What would happen if the following happened, right? Price travels to our... Uh, entry point here, you know, zigzags a little bit, hits our T1, and then goes to the stop. What, did you make money or did you lose money? Let me know what you think.
in the chat box. Don't be shy. It's okay. It's, if you don't know, say, I'm not sure. That's fine. That's the first step in, in you know, getting better at this is say, listen, I don't know. I think you made money. I think you lost money. I don't know. You tell me. I will. I just want to give everybody a little bit more time. Now, um, as far as our final target, in this scenario, we don't have a final target. We determine our final target by looking at this common time frame on the right and say, okay, where is the first opposition? So, right, we're going short, so an opposition would be where's the first green UFO? Well, lo and behold, we don't have one, right? There's no green UFO. Okay, that's fine. We don't have a green UFO. That's okay. We can still take this trade. The difference would be is that we're going to be trail stopping this. As new UFOs develop, we'll just be moving our stop. Because remember this way, if there's nothing down below and this is moving in our favor, right? This is, let's say this hits us and starts moving in our favor. Yay, we're making money. We're, we're happy, right? Everything's good, even though we shouldn't be tying emotions to making money. It's, it's a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling, right? Let's say a new red UFO forms right here. Well, guess what? I'm going to take my stop and I'm going to move it right here. Right, let's say the purple line is our stop. So I'm going to take my stop and I'm going to move it down here. So that way I protect profits. All right. All right, let's see. Lost money, made money, omid. Okay, guys, um, it was a trick question. It was a break even. All right, and the reason why, the reason why it was a break even trade is the following, right? This is. This T1, we're taking off 50% at it, all right? So that means 50% of the remainder is left. So if 50% gave us profit and the remaining 50% uh, got stopped out here, right? So this is negative 50%. You made nothing. You probably actually, in reality, probably uh, lost a little bit of money due to commissions and swaps. All right, so but in reality, not considering fees and commissions, you made nothing. So that can happen too. All right, uh, pa -pa -pa -pum. All right. let's place uh, this uh, trade. I'm just going to put a placeholder for this one. You know, I'm going to put a placeholder for this one. Okay, the order was sent, but I don't see it. Question mark. Okay, it just took a little bit. That was a little strange. I don't see my the the second like there it is. All right, finally, that's weird. Okay, so there we go. That's our trade setup. Um, we're looking to go short. We don't have, and I'm gonna put this here as well. Right, we don't have a. Um, We know T2, this is a filler uh, price target. Trail stop according to rules. Okay, so we're just going to put that there so we know that this is not the real T2. This is just a trail stop. This is a filler price just so we have something to move around if and when this thing happens last but most definitely not least is to take a screenshot of this save that today is 2022-0406 this is euro usd this is the daily setup okay so this is the daily setup on this one all right now it's going to go a lot faster because we'll be looking at this much easier and let me demonstrate by what i mean it's going to be going a lot easier all right look at this 22 days out of typically six. Is this on time or are we late to the party? We're very late to the party. Done with the analysis. Took seven seconds. Four hour. Currently on the eighth one out of typically eight. So we're just at the end of this party. Moving on. Hourly. Unconfirmed. What do we do? Look elsewhere. We just analyzed three different setups. 
on the dollar yen on the inside of 20 30 seconds uh camber uh gold i can i can look at gold at the end of this it's just this is uh, uh forex and crypto so we're really focusing on forex and crypto but if we go through the majors and some crypto pairs, we can also take a look at gold. It's not a problem. I know uh, a lot of the Forex uh, providers these days, they do provide you uh, XAU USD, which is the, uh, the gold equivalent, um, to, be, to trade it. Um, I myself trade futures uh, as well. So I trade, the, uh, I trade gold, uh, the crude oil. I trade uh, the ES, uh, the S&P, the NASDAQ, Dow Jones, the Russell and so on uh 23rd 23rd hourly candle up out of typically five very late to the party right all right four hour okay sixth one out of five again late to the party we're just late to these parties folks and that's okay boom there we go first one okay this is the first one Currently, one out of typically six. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, see if we have anything. 55 minutes, still good. I didn't even have to change this because I was only focusing on this side, right? Let's go and see what we have here. It's a good thing that we already have something here. Let's move this and see if we have a trade. Moving average is at 92.919. Do we have anything at 92.919? And boy, do we have a massive UFO here. Look at that, 92,983 to 92,743. That is a huge UFO, and I'll take it. Because if you don't like the size or the risk of it, uh, guess what? It automatically adjusts it for you how many, what, which, with what size you need to go with. All right? Let's go and set this up. We're going to be buying this time. We're not shorting. So remember, a bit of a different rule set up when it comes to rounding up and down. So do we round up or down here? Well, we round up. So this is 9, right? Look at this. Round up plus add 2 pips for entry. So not only do we round it up, but we also add 2 pips for entry. So this becomes 301. Take profit, stop loss. Stop loss goes down below 92743. Got to add the zero. All right, what do we do here? Again, round down, negative five. All right, if you want to take a screenshot of this, you're more than welcome to. I'll leave it on for a little bit just so you have an idea of exactly what this does. And, and, and I can, I'll tell you the reason why we do this. The reason why we do this is because... Um, Every Forex uh, liquidity provider, not even broker, liquidity provider, there's many of them around the world. There's, there's a few handful that are kind of controlling the majority of liquidity, but every for this isn't a centralized exchange. It's a decentralized exchange, right? Forex, there's no central exchange for Forex. It's not like the CME or the ICE or um, what's the CBOE, which are now kind of hand in hand with the CME. Uh, it's not a centralized exchange, it's a decentralized product. So there's always going to be a variation, and we capture some of that variation by making sure we get into the right trades by having these roundups and round downs for entries and stops. All right? So again, for the stop, we round down and take out negative 5 pips. So we round down, this is a 4, take out 5 more pips, this is 69. So we're risking 32 pips. 32 pips to go long uh, to go to do this and now this is the beautiful thing uh, This goes up for six days. So that means we have a whole week to make this work All right, so I'm gonna give it a whole actually well That's gonna in include the um, It's gonna be more than a week a tradable week because Saturday uh, Friday night through Saturday uh, morning, depending on where you are, in the, uh, uh, Friday night through Saturday night, the, most, of the mar uh, most of the markets are closed. Depending on where you are, they open Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, so I'll leave this in for a week. So we're going to buy that there. That's our setup. All right, same thing. We're going to buy. Now I'm going to go a little bit, you know, 92691. Why am I doing this? Because TradingView, this is my workaround. 
trading view cancels my orders. I don't like that. All right, in this scenario, we do have a final target. Our first opposing UFO is up here at 955558. Okay, so that's our first opposing UFO. That's our final target. This is on the daily time frame. This is not a, a you know a UFO to joke around. Okay, same with these guys down here. They're no joke UFOs. Daily stuff is, you know, powerful stuff. All right? So we're going to do the same thing. Stop loss thing is the same, except the take profit is going to be at 0 0.95558. What's our rules? Round down, opposing common time frame UFO, minus 2 pips, right? So round down, opposing time frame, minus 2. Rounding this down is 5. Minus 2, this is 3. All right? And same thing. Leave that for a week. And I did something wrong. All right, hold on. 9, 2, that's why. 9, 3, 0, 1, 1 is where this price should have been. Okay, that's what it was. Our stop loss is at... Point, sorry about that, folks. Point nine two six nine, and our final one stays the same. So there we go. That's much more like it. All right. Let's put our horizon, our vertical here, so we know this is what we were looking at when we were looking to buy this. That's our entry right there. Gonna take us this uh, horizontal, right? So this is what our setup is looking like. All right. Let's go ahead and save that. 2022 0406. This is the USD CHF daily setup. Boom. Done. All right. Uh, looks like we got a lot more requests for gold. Uh, let me see if I have this plugged in here. If not, I'm going to have to. Yeah, it looks like I should have it. Okay, there it is. So for gold, this is the current situation. Uh, on the daily, we're not confirmed, and I know this because I did a, a 3D market commentary right before I started this. Uh, on the oops, on the four hour, all right, on the four hour, we actually have confirmation, and this is the second one out of typically six. So we're definitely not late to this party. Let's see if we have a trade. We actually might have a trade here. Um, it. <laughs> Sorry. 1926.6. Nearest UFO says is at 1924.29. All right. Let me see how this would look. <clears throat> in reality, we, we were already been in this trade. You see these couple of wicks here? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. All right. In reality, this is the this is the entry UFO, right? You already got a couple of wigs going in there, so you would have already been in this trade. Um, but since the UFO is still there, it's still a valid trade. Let's uh, go ahead and set this up. All right. We're going to buy. We have 1924.29. Stop loss is going to be at 1918.335. Take profit is going to be the same thing. We're going to be risking 150 bucks, 25 units. Um, okay, that's good. Now, again, this is, uh, we have six, so we got four, four hour increments. That's 16 hours. Um, it's going to have to be something like this. 16 hours from now is essentially tomorrow at 12, around there somewhere. Yeah. All right. So. You know, that, that's what it kind of looks like. Now, um, I'm sorry, actually, the stop should not be at 19.335. I need to modify this. The stop needs to be 19.335. If we apply the same rules, we round this down, and we reduce uh, five pips. So this will actually be at 28. All right, so that's what it should look like.
Yeah. So 28, and this one is at 300. So that this is what I mean. You know, realistically speaking, um, when we started this session, this would have been the entry, and you've already gotten T1, so you already risk off. Uh, trade is still valid, and it is valid because the UFO is still there. Um, Let's go ahead and set the, the re remainder of the of the leg. Again, you have a big UFO right here at 1943. So we're going to do the same thing, uh, 1924.29. I'm just going to put this at, you know, 89 like this, just so it registers my order. Stop remains the same at 1918.28. Our profit, though, goes to 1943.195. Uh, round this down at 19, and I believe it's minus 2 again. Yep, minus 2, so 17. All right, good till tomorrow at 12. Bye. Okay, that's our setup for gold. So looking at this the same way that I have, um, that would be the setup for gold. Again, we're, we are a little bit late to the party, but not too late, okay? Uh, gold's been open. The market's been open, so this will probably end up uh, moving a little bit. Uh, gold has been losing a little bit of steam lately. It has not been moving as volatile as some other markets like crude oil and so on, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see if we can squeeze in a, a crypto trade before we end the session today. On the four hour, it's been dropping past the extension point. What about the hourly? Also past the extension point. Let's like a, take a look at Ethereum. We're probably going to be very similar to each other. Uh, Omid, I don't. I don't use fundamental or news. Uh, I use technical primarily. I try to detach myself from news. It's, um, you know, market opens and, and stuff like that, you know, is impactful here. If there's something that's really important and critical, like uh, obviously some, some huge event happening, you know, it's going to affect your uh, price action. But listen, that could affect it either way, right? It could go your ways or it can go against you. You know, if you have your trade set up, you know, it should be what you trade. All right, so Hope, um, I'll share a link with it so you can go there. So www.tradewithufos.com slash Boyan. You can go to this website here and sign up for the free membership, and you'll be able to see the indicators that we have available. So I use the auto climate, which is what you see down here. This is our very own indicator. And also the auto UFOs, these flying saucers that give you these zones. Um, those are our own proprietary and patented technology that we utilize. So, but you're, uh, you know, we do have it available for public use as well. All right, just looking at some of the crypto stuff. It's pretty much going to be more or less the same across the board. Sometimes there will be differences that allow us to squeeze into a trade, but not a whole lot happening. Everything's pretty much right across the board. Looking at percent change. All right, Zill's popping up a little bit. Unconfirmed. ZEC, unconfirmed. XMR, okay, the first one out of typically five. All right, moving hours at 220.07. 220.04, that's here. Okay, so we could actually take this trade here. All right, so here we go. We have a, a I'm going to just do this last trade here because we're already at the point of ending this. Uh, I just don't like to leave the session without at least one crypto trade. 52 is our entry point. Okay, um, stop loss is going to be at 224.96. I, I, for crypto, I like to give it like at least 20 cents if it's uh, this kind of an instrument or 
200 bucks if it's Bitcoin. So I'm going to go at 16. Okay, risking 150 bucks again. Uh, time in force is going to be. This is the four hour, so we're looking at four more four hour increments, which is 16 hours, which is what we know is tomorrow at 12. Okay, set, sell. All right, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna go at 220.51, I'm gonna go this time. Stop loss is going to remain at 225.16. Our final target is going to be at 209.70, risking again 150 bucks. There it is. So that's that setup for XMR USDT. Uh, Omid, if you go to that link, tradewithufos.com, here I'll just open it up for you. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's funny. It's because I clicked on it from the um, website. So this is my uh, this is the landing page that you'll see here. You can set up a meeting. You can ask me any questions here, or of course I can share my. Um, uh, why can't I share? Here we go. Boyan at tradictive.com. That's my email as well. All right. And you can do all kinds of stuff here on our website. Check it out. There's a new website coming out soon, which is going to be really cool, really much more interactive and intuitive. But uh, before we go, guys, oops, let's not forget that we have to take a screenshot. Damn, look at this move. Come on. <laughs> ah, crap. Okay, it's fine. Let's uh, let's take a screenshot of this before we go, so we don't forget it. Oh, we forgot something. That's what happens when you rush, 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 right? Let's not forget the verticals, so it's easy to identify which point of time we saw what. Oh, for at which point of time do we see XMR? This is the four-hour setup. All right, that's that for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you enjoyed this session, and I will catch you next time. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care, and thank you for keeping it interactive. I really do appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Hope. Thank you, Omid. Thank you, everybody. Take care.